In this screencast, we will show you how you can use suzyq's path command to troubleshoot a problem in your network. Imagine you have a network such as the one shown in this picture. It's a classical leaf spine topology uh, where a subnet is restricted to a pair of leaves. The servers are all dual attached. So essentially a subnet is restricted to a pair of leaves. So there is no eVPN in this network. What you see as a network operator is that the interface between leaf one and leaf two, which is essentially this interface, is getting a lot of link utilization. Typically that link gets utilized only if there's a failure in one of the interfaces going from leaf one to one of the servers. So you check and you notice that none of the interfaces between the servers and the leaf is down. So why is there a problem between the server, uh, bit, uh, why is the peer link getting utilized? To troubleshoot this, you can do many things. One of the things you can do is utilize suzyq's path command. Tracepath, which is a powerful network operational tool, has been used forever. With suzyq, that tracepath has been enhanced to provide additional information to help you troubleshoot your network even more than you can with a classical trace route. So what you can choose to do is run a trace between 172.16.1.101 and 172.16.4.104 to see if you see any particular problem. Since none of the interfaces are down, the packet should use one of these links going from uh, server 101 and hit leaf 1 or leaf 2 and then go up to one of the spines based on the packet hash using ECMP, hit one of these leaves and then come down eventually to leaf 04. Uh, server 104. So if everything is right, this is what should be happening, then this should be the packet flow and the peer link should never be used. But clearly that's not happening and you want to see what is going on. So you decide to use the path command within suzyq to troubleshoot this. I've already fired up the path command. So you can see here that the source is essentially 172.16.1.101. The dest is 1.4.104 and what you get when you hit this and you hit trace is the output that you see in this picture. So immediately it is apparent that something is wrong because packets from server 101 that hit, uh, sorry, that hit leaf, leaf 01 is not going directly to spine 01. So this packet is not going this way, but it is actually going over leaf 01 to leaf 02. Now this happens only if the spine link is being utilized. So what you can do is just hover your mouse over that link and you will see right away that the link that is being utilized is really the peer link as is obvious from this OIF information that's present in the output associated with that link. So you say like, okay, the peer link is getting utilized. We are clear that packets from server 101 to server 104 is utilizing the peer link. Now, why is this happening? Now, you, instead of trying to troubleshoot any further, by just looking at this picture, Suzy Q is telling you that something is wrong in this link from server 101 to leaf 01 and leaf 02. This is a bonded interface, even though it looks like two separate links, logically it's one link. So both links are marked as red. So you can, because you have already found out that nothing is wrong with the interfaces or devices, you can decide to focus on the link directly. If you want, you could also have looked at just putting your mouse on one of these nodes and seeing that none of the interfaces or routing protocols or MLAG has any error. So everything looks good from those perspectives, but something else is wrong. What is that? If you just focus on one of these links, what you get right away is the error that is causing this problem, which is the possible use of Anycast IP without an Anycast MAC as highlighted by this error message. Typically, when you have got dual attached servers, what you tend to do is utilize uh, any cast IP on the two leaves connected to the server and the server just use uh, talks to those any cast IP. So it doesn't matter which link it takes, it should hit the right uh, IP address, the next top IP address and go out from there to spine one and spine two. Now, when you use an Anycast IP, you also use an Anycast MAC with an XOS, it's the fabric forwarding address, with uh, Arista, it's a warp, with Cumulus, it's BRR. With any of these different solutions, they all provide an option to allow you to use uh, Anycast MAC with an Anycast IP. But what it's telling you is the Anycast IP is used, but the Anycast MAC is not used. How do you troubleshoot that further? You can go into the explore page and go look at the different interfaces. But instead, what Suzy Q is doing is also providing you additional debug information. 
you can find out what they are by clicking for example on this node when you click on this node a page opens up which tells you what the packet forwarding logic used to get from 101 to 4.104 on server 01 so on server 01 what happened is because it's in a different subnet it did a routing lookup the routing lookup was on 6.0.0 which resulted in an extra IP of 1.1 and then if you look at the ARP and D lookup associated with 1.1, it is using a MAC address of BADF. What SuzyQ is doing in addition is showing you all the interfaces that match the next hop IP of 172.16.1.1 that are attached to server 101. That is essentially leaf 1 and leaf 2, so that looks correct. And you see here that the MAC address of BADF, however, is only associated with leaf 2. It is not associated with leaf 1. This is the reason why you are having a problem about only packets going to leaf 2 and if they are going to leaf 1, they are traversing the peer link between leaf 1 and leaf 2 to get to the router MAC which is essentially BADF before they get routed out to the spines. So very quickly by just looking at the path output within SUSEQ and then troubleshooting visually what the issue is, you got the information about the problem. So essentially, if for example, with an Arista device, you had set the IP virtual router MAC address to be incorrect between the leaf one and leaf two, or with NXOS, the fabric forwarding address, or with Cumulus, the FRR address, the Anycast virtual router Anycast address, VRR Anycast address was incorrectly set between leaf one and leaf two, either because of manual operator error or because of uh, automation script bug, you would end up in this particular problem. And you've got a potentially complicated problem which using SUSEQ you were able to troubleshoot quickly enough to identify the problem.